Hello again and welcome to another episode of The Really Show, where we report on the funny, weird, and interesting things we find online. I'm your host, Aaron Ross. Bam. Today's show, Dictator's Delights. Dictators. Sorry. Remember, if you like the show, we'd sure appreciate it if you would subscribe. Our first story, Benito Mussolini, Garlic Lover. Italy's former fascist dictator Benito Mussolini was renowned for suffering from ulcers. According to his daughter-in-law, Maria Ciccolone, it was a fallacy and contrary to popular belief that he survived on chicken broth and indigestion powders. In fact, he munched away on garlic. He couldn't resist shoving down large quantities of the raw stuff, which Mussolini claimed was the elixir of life and good for his heart. But unfortunately for those close to him, not so good for his breath. Mm, hey, hey, hey. In our second story, Fidel Castro, baseball fanatic. Fidel Castro, famous baseball enthusiast, well before he became Cuba's dictator. Likewise, Cuba has a long history with baseball, dating back to the late 1800s. The Cuban League was one of the earliest and longest lasting professional baseball leagues outside of the United States, operating in Cuba from 1878 to 1961. Now, Castro ended the professional league soon after coming into power. He then created the Cuban National Series, Serie Nacional de Baseball, which is the domestic amateur baseball competition in Cuba. The league currently has 16 teams, one representing each province and two for the city of Havana. Of course, there is the perpetuated myth that many of you are probably familiar with that before Castro became a revolutionary, he tried out for the New York Yankees or Washington Senators. Sadly, this is not true. There's no record of it ever having happened. And Castro was a mediocre baseball player at best. But how cool would it be if it was true? Baseball being very, very good to me. Our next story, Joseph Stalin the poet. Around the time he was studying in the priesthood, a 17-year-old Joseph Stalin discovered he had a talent for poetry. And surprisingly, quite a good poet and was critically acclaimed by intellectuals of the day. Although ultimately his passion for poetry lost out for his passion for revolution. One of these poems, Morning, begins, The pinkish bud has opened, rushing to the pale blue violet, and stirred by a light breeze, the lily of the valley has bent over the grass. Whoa. All right, I'm not even gonna touch that one. There's a, now, there's an interesting backstory that supposedly goes, the famous bank robbery that helped propel Stalin to the head of the Bolshevik party was brought about by a tip from a bank teller who was a great admirer of Stalin's poetry. Interesting story, if it's true. Our final story, Muammar Gaddafi, megalomaniac, iron-fisted dictator, metrosexual. Gaddafi worked hard to maintain his image of sex appeal, especially to those in the West. He was very much into looking good, and vanity inspired him to get plastic surgery in 1994. Undoubtedly, part of his effort to look sexy was to help win over the women that he pined for, such as former U.S. Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice. I mean, he even had a song written for her called Black Flower in the White House. Ow! So let me ask, how do you think the world would be different today if Stalin had remained a poet and a priest? And in light of recent improved relations with Cuba, do you think the country would consider bringing back professional baseball? Peace, peace be a fee. Please feel free to write your comments about these questions or any other thoughts in the comments area. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time. And now for something completely different.